It's 8.30 in the morning. I am not eating an onion. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to Starburst Homestead. I'm Zach and Jenna's right outside. We're back in the store. So we have built another long raised bed. We'll show you all that in the next garden tour. But the garden is to the point to where it's like, we're good to go. We can grow plenty of stuff. Now it's time to shift focus back to the store. As you can tell, not a lot's been done since you last saw us. I have ran all the electrical, if you remember that fiasco, I paid them to do it. They did it all completely wrong. I had to pull all the wire back out, take out all the outlets, redo it myself. So that was terrible and a loads of fun, but I got that done. So we have power. We have now insulated the walls, haven't insulated the ceiling yet. And now we went to Lowe's and found about the only thing we could find. This paneling. We don't hate it, but it's definitely not exactly what we had in mind. And this really beautiful light, it kind of looks baby blue. And the store looked great. Our idea, actually Jen's idea, was actually to recreate our old pole barn and what we did there and see if they had the same paneling. They didn't. Um, and I'm not a very good drywall guy, so we like we really wanted to stick with paneling because we want to get this thing done as quickly as possible. We're trying to reach it for our chicken butchering that we're having at the end of April to get it to where we can actually sell something out of. It's definitely not going to be finished, per se, but we should be daggone close and be able to at least sell stuff out of it as an actual working store. So we're gonna use this paneling and get it up in there. One problem with these little shed, shed to home things though, they're not eight foot ceilings and it's hard to find anything that's not an eight foot four by eight piece of plywood, wall paneling, drywall, etc. It's actually 78 inches, so a little bit more than six foot. So I'm gonna have to cut every board to fit in there, but that's okay. The one good thing about this paneling, it's very, very light colored. Being a small place, with not many windows, hopefully it will at least brighten the things up. So, let's get on it. Okay, here we are. So I've gotten this wall and that wall done. Um, and it's looking good. Um, obviously, it's gonna look a lot better once we get the face plates on the outlets and then we actually get some trim up to kind of break up some of the gray that's going on here because it's a lot of gray. But the good thing is it is very much lightening, lightening this place up. Um, the lighter color is definitely helping and you're seeing the skylight. That's what that light is that you're seeing down here. But you know, it works. And I don't think I really mentioned it, but the reason we did decide this was, I mean, it was $30 a sheet uh, just with this. And you all know how wood prices are. It's insane right now. Um, so if wood was normal and things were normal, we probably would have definitely chosen something a little bit different um, and maybe a little bit more pretty. But I do have very good faith in Jen's decorating techniques that these walls will just be accents, which right now it's just like, whoa, that's a lot of gray. Um, with all the stuff that she's going to do with it. So I think overall it's going to go great. But that was probably the hard-ish wall because I had the window. There she is. I had to cut out two. And that's just the tedious part. You know, measure two, three times, cut once kind of thing. So far, I haven't messed one of these up yet. My cuts haven't been too bad. Um, so we're getting there. I'm definitely not a carpenter, as you all know. But we get stuff done. And that's what we're doing. So now this wall should go fairly easy because there's no specialty cuts besides the outlets. And after you've done a few outlets, um, you start to get the hang of it and know exactly where they are. The breaker box wasn't bad either. All right, after getting half of the store completely walled up and done, um, my old butt said, it's Sunday, it's time to go do other things. Actually, no, she reminded me, she's like, no, remember, we gotta go give water to the animals and all this stuff. Up, right. eat dinner. And it's one of those, dogs. one of those, <laughs> <laughs> be fun. I trash out. Uh, it's one of those things, when I start working on a project, it's like everything else just goes blank. I don't always track of time, I, all other responsibilities are just out of the window. Um, but it was a really nice day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had the kids out there with us, primarily 
uh, Raylan White was uh, back and forth coming in and out. But it was just a really good Sunday getting some work done. And I feel good about the progress that we yeah. made. Um, but it's the next day. Um, so I think the last time y'all saw us freeze dry, we freeze dried carrots, yes. I believe. Um, we'll show you what those look like. But immediately we went and cut up a bunch of onions that were starting to sprout and freeze dried those. Well, they're ready. Oh, wow. Feels like styrofoam. All right, here they are. And it's just, I mean, it's, I, I guess the, the best thing I can remind it of is like, you know those like little S styrofoam things that come in packaging? Yeah. You know, that's that's like what it feels they like. They still in smell like onions though. Yeah, I they do. Smell them. Try one. No. Try one. You're crazy. Well, I'll try one. It's 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> I am not eating an onion. <laughs> By golly, I'm going to try one. Go for it. You're just shining in the light. I'm going to try a little one. All right, here we go. Oh it's God, really good. Raw onion for breakfast. Well, it doesn't taste like it's not as potent as a raw onion. Mm. It's really just sweet. That's good. But with onion flavor. Let's mm. try one. No, just a little one. Thank you. Well, we'll get there then. No, we'll spicy. <laughs> All right, so these she is getting in a half gallon, and here are carrots that you can see. They turned out really great too. They still have the great carrot flavor. Cap all the form. Now with these onions, you have really a couple options you could take around. You could actually grind them up and make onion powder, mm -hmm. right? So you could use it as seasoning. We're leaving them whole. And we kind of count these as like soup and stock yeah. ingredients. Um, so that's actually why they're in mason jars. So the things that we're gonna use more often, we'll put in mason jars. And the things that we, you know, have as long-term storage, that's what really hits the, uh, the mylar bags. So that's why these are staying whole and, the, and they're very pretty always helps to brighten up the pantry a little. Okay, so we did end up putting one in a Mylar bag. Um, I guess it held a lot more than we expected it to. Um, I guess they're so small, I almost thought it would only go in one half gallon. Um, but since this is plenty for quite some time, the other one's in a large Mylar bag. All right, now that the onions are done, it's time to go open up the greenhouse, because right now we're still dropping pretty close to freezing and we've got a lot of stuff in there. So we've got a heater that runs through the night, but as soon as that sun starts hitting it, you need to come turn that thing off because you're gonna be like 200 degrees up in there real fast. It is currently 30 something outside and already 52 in here. So here's everything we got going in. Here are all of our up potted peppers. Um, now the one thing I will let you know we up out of these a little soon and we did that on purpose because when they're in these small cells um, that we get from hostels, which we love, they do grow well. However, we notice the sooner that you can get them transplanted to the, some bigger soil, the better they're going to grow. And because peppers are so slow anyways, we wanted to go ahead and get a head start. Thankfully, everybody transplanted over very well and are doing absolutely fantastic. We also got a lot of Jen's herbs out here. So she has some chamomile, nasturtiums, Italian basil, Genovese basil, I guess. Uh, and then some echinacea double deckers. We use the echinacea a lot for tinctures. Over here is, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the marigolds. And then we have some calendula over there. Raylan strawberry we need to get in the ground. Rosemary that we did purchase. But that's just because sometimes you gotta purchase some items. We don't have the luxury to purchase a whole lot here. And I would say 99.9% .9 of the seeds that we have in our garden, we started. Just because there's no real nurseries around. So every once in a while, feed store will have one that you need, and that's when we get them. We also have a lot of yarrow. Hey! A lot of yarrow, marjoram, thyme, and then cilantro. Cilantro's my own. I love it. Comment down below if you're a, a lover of cilantro or one that just cannot stand it because I know it's one or the other. There's no in-between. Jen's chocolate mint is doing amazing up in here. Came back and this greenhouse is keeping it protected and we're having a really quick start on that. That is so good. I just snack on it like it's gum. And the kids have started painting their raised beds. Raylan's got a little rainbow on hers and all kinds of pretty color. And all of the broccoli and cabbage are doing great, along with the peas. Um, everybody has transplanted well out here. And we are having zero issues, just letting them grow, letting them grow. And over the weekend, on top of doing the store, we did get the sixth bed built. 
So now at least for my OCD friendly people, we now have two, two, two instead of two, two, one. Um, and we should be getting more soil coming this week. So we'll get that filled up, the raised bed by the greenhouse and the, the kids raised beds. I think we have decided that over here though, we're not gonna build another long bed because it's starting to encroach in like our hangout area, but we probably will be doing some pallet trellises some maybe smaller boxes for flowers and stuff like that. But we are still gonna put some stuff here. It just won't be these ginormous long beds. Oh, almost forgot in our beautiful green stock, we planted some of our lettuce we had started, some of our kale, some romaine lettuce. We got some cauliflower down here and we're just gonna see how it goes. But we're excited about having these in here. You can get so many plants in these green stocks. It's amazing. And in this one, we have all of our strawberries that are coming back for the, for the year and looking really good. All right, so here's what we got. We got this wall back wall and then i started getting this back wall going here and so it's literally half i stopped at the halfway point so i have the same thing to do one more time and the walls will be done so you know when we show you this uh we like to show ideas right so it's not do it specifically how i do it it's hey here's a way that you can do it without hiring it out and that's always been our goal um, as you were watching this video, I'm sure you saw some things like, oh, that might not be right, or that might not be how we would specifically do it. And that's okay. Um, I am here to challenge you to say, hey, if this is something that you're wanting to do, go do it. Um, I'll be the first one to admit, like I had said in this video, I'm not a carpenter. Um, I've just learned some skills along the way. You know, we did build a house. Wasn't perfect to a lot of people, but it was perfect to us. It's gonna be the same with the store. It's not gonna be perfect to everyone, but it'll be perfect to us. And I don't even have all the right tools to, to kind of do this stuff. Tools are expensive, right? On top of the lumber costs and screws and everything. Um, but just do it, just do it. Get it to where it's done. Because the one thing to remember is you're never gonna get where you wanna go if you don't even start. And so just starting and making sure you're scratching projects off your to-do list and being able to move on to the next one you're just continuing to learn and you're just getting better every time you do one thing. And so that's the way I try to look at it. It's what we tell the kids too, like when they have their worksheets they have to do for homeschool. Quit looking at, you have to do the whole store. Look at, I need to work on that one piece of plywood and get it right and then move to the next one because then you're accomplishing tasks. And just in doing half the store, my skills got better, right? So the first couple over here, not the greatest. Those over here, lot better and i'm pretty confident it'll continue to do that all the way down this store so keep tagging along we have a tight timeline to try to get this done we're hosting a chicken butchering class in the late of april so the goal is to at least be able to sell stuff out of here um fingers crossed we're going to do our best to try to get there and this helps keep our store and our family life kind of separate because you know we, we do have a lot of stuff to sell but right now we can only sell it from our home so we want to actually have a structure that people can walk in and look around and have a cash register and all that good stuff um, and just make it better for the farm business in general but either way we're excited this thing stood still for quite some time and just over the weekend we made a lot of progress so here we go time to just keep pushing so we love you all and we hope that you all enjoyed this video we have plenty more coming this week of a lot of good stuff that's happening it's just a crazy crazy time of year for everybody when it hits spring if you haven't subscribed make sure to down below we love y'all bye